everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. You clicked on the video. You saw the title. You know what this is about. We finally have the capability to be able to mirror an Azure SQL database behind a private endpoint into Microsoft Fabric. This is a fresh announcement straight from the floor of Fabcon itself. As a matter of fact, the demo you're gonna see today is one I hope put together with the PG for this announcement. You know, my hat's off to the team over there, Idris Montawala, uh, Wilson Lee, uh, so many people working on this product over at Microsoft. Super, super excited for us to be able to have this. We're living in a world where nothing is gonna get less secure. So what do you do when you set up your Azure SQL as a best practice, you typically have a private endpoint in place and you're securing that network access. Well, you wanna use mirroring because it's an unbelievable tool. It's that easy button. It allows us to forklift over and get the incremental updates constantly happening underneath the covers and you offload all the locking, blocking, and reporting that you would have if you were reporting straight off of your old TP system. Now you've got a data warehouse sitting over in Fabric. This is wonderful stuff. We've got documentation on it. It's all in the description of the video. I don't wanna talk about this though. I wanna show it to you. Let's get over that great content. All right, we're starting out my Azure portal and I'm starting with my logical SQL server, SQL Balls 3 Private. I'm gonna start looking at security because I want you to see the private setup that we've got. First off, I have my public access disabled, and under my private access, you can see I've got a private endpoint connection. Now, if I come down, you can see I've created a database, private underscore DB. And if I come under the database and I try to make a connection to it, you'll see I, I can't get a connection even though I'm in the Azure portal because I don't have the network connectivity to it. If I go to my desktop and I go to SSMS and I try and connect, I'm gonna get a network error. And the reason is, again, because I don't have network access over the public internet into my Azure SQL database. Now, looking at the VNet and the way we've got it set up, I've got a default VM subnet where I've got a virtual machine, an Azure Bastion I'm going to use to connect to it, our private endpoint for our Azure SQL database, and then also our VNet for our Microsoft Fabric VNet. Now, we've done a video on how to make a Microsoft Fabric VNet data gateway in detail. Make sure that you've got the Power Platform providers registered to your Azure account. Otherwise, you won't be able to create the VNet data gateway that you need within Microsoft Fabric. That is down in the description of the video. So if you haven't done that before, make sure and hit pause right now. Go and walk through that video and then come back here. I'll be waiting for you right now. Don't worry. Right back. Good. Okay, let's keep going. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to a, a, my virtual machine behind my Bastion in my SQL Server Management Studio. I'm able to connect to that just fine because we're part of different subnets, but we're on the same VNet. So we have permissions to one another. You can see there's my private database. Let's go ahead and let's open up a file. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create an object for us to be able to mirror across. Pretty simple one. This could be a heap. Another big announcement out of Fabcon is we can now mirror heap tables. So. I'm gonna run this, create 50 records. This will be enough for us to initialize the mirror. Now let's go over to Microsoft Fabric. The first thing we need to do is we need to complete the VNet data gateway setup. I'm gonna to go to manage connections and gateways, and then I'm gonna to go to virtual data gateways, and I'm gonna click new. When I do that, I'm going to first select the license capacity that I'm gonna utilize. Then I'm gonna to go to my Azure subscription and select the subscription. I'm going to select the resource group, which is my VMs, which is where my network was originally provisioned. I'm going to get the VM name, vball SQL VNet, and then fabric VNet for my VNet subnet. And I'm gonna click save. This will create that VNet data gateway that allows us to communicate back and forth over that private endpoint. And now I can go and I can actually utilize this to create our mirror. We'll say new item, we go to our mirror. I'm gonna select my mirrored Azure SQL database and then I'm going to do a connection. Now, this is where it gets interesting. We put everything in the same, our logical SQL server name, our database name. I'm gonna set the connection to private endpoint so I know exactly and specifically what this is for, but then that data gateway button, that's the new thing. That's our fabric magic right there. I'm gonna select the VNet data gateway that we just created. I'm gonna use my organizational account and I'm gonna sign in. Make sure you've got your two-factor authentication on. We wanna be secure, right? and then I'm gonna go ahead and connect. I've only got this one table, so I'm just gonna connect. I'm gonna have it pick up all my tables, click next, click next. We're gonna let this initialize. I fast forwarded through this part a little bit. It's gonna spin for about a minute, but once it does, the first thing that happens when I refresh is we'll get the schema of our table. 
The second thing that happens is I'm going to get my data, my rows being forklifted over. And there's my 50 rows. Now let's go back and let's actually add some more. Let's go from 50 to 5,000. Let's add 5,000 rows. So that'll make it 5,050 replicated changes. And then, well, just to be a little devious, let's add a new column with the default date of get date. I run that and now there's another 5,050 operations that need to replicate over. So what we should see is a total of 10,100 rows that replicate over to our mirror. Let's do a quick select star. I can see there's my new column, my date. I can see that I've got 5,050 rows. Now let's head back over to Microsoft Fabric. Let's do a refresh. And sure enough, boom, there we go. 10,100 rows. That's all those changes. There's only 5,050 rows, but it's the complete replication. Keep that in mind. Okay, so now let's do a simple thing. I'm just gonna do select my clustered index from uh, I'm select from my clustered index. There we go. Uh, we go ahead and run this. I've completely offloaded this. I'm running against the SQL analytics endpoint from a mirror, but this is data that I've created. There's my get date. There's my new column. Fabulous stuff. And this is all behind a private endpoint. I've, you know where we want to keep this going. We want to hear from you. Are you excited about this? Are you looking forward to this? I, I know there were some customers I worked with in private preview where they couldn't use this until it was behind a private endpoint. And this is going to unblock them so they're able to finally use mirroring. It is such a wonderful tool. I'm so excited. This is probably one of my favorite things that we have in Microsoft Fabric. And I can't wait to hear how you're going to be using this. Thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. We look forward to seeing you again. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's